something happening here. Ready, let's see. Right, do you, you want to talk? You want me to just play? Uh, let's talk first. Okay. I mean, I talked to you a little bit about this earlier in the week, but tell me again. Tell so, me the name yeah, of the so, song. Wait, wait, wait a second. You got to talk to me for a second. Go ahead. I, I read all your tweets. Sure. You've got all these, all these references to songs and inside bits about bands, and you've got this running gag about band names. So what's what, what is all this? Are you a musician from? I, I am. Or you know, I am a. Uh, I can play a little bit of guitar. I play a little bit of mountain dulcimer. I just bought an auto harp. I'm trying to learn how to play that. But I am not a musician by any means. So what kind? What kind of music do you like the best? Uh, what am I gonna find on your iPod? Not genre. I, I don't. I don't have anything like that. You know, I'm yeah. not. I'm not high tech. Uh, I like bluegrass. I like old country. Um, I like some classic rock. I like a mix of stuff. Okay. So, um, so I can't you, play any of it very well. So if you had a if you had a band, what would you name it? That's a good question. I don't know. Shaky video guys. I, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. So fair enough. I had a roommate in college. He played guitar. He taught me, you know, the opening for Sweet Home Alabama and yep. Skid Row and some stuff like that back yep. in the eighties and nineties. So. That's all I know. I'm not as talented as you are, obviously. Uh, we just have fun, right? Yeah. That's what it's about. How long have you been playing? Uh, you know, I started, uh, I got my first guitar when I was a sophomore in high school. I was actually a trumpet guy to begin with. Okay. Uh, by the time I got to college, I realized that guitar wasn't a great thing for picking up girls. And so I, I moved over to, to the guitar. And uh, I don't know, I guess that work is... Uh, woman I've been married to 36 years is uh, I've met her playing guitar. Now I've got to ask, what year were you a sophomore in high school? What would that have been? <laughs> that would have been, uh, let's just say Richard Nixon was president. Okay, so what kind of music were you playing? Uh, you know, I was really at that point listening to a lot more uh, folky country kind of things. Uh, I was a big fan of America and James Taylor and Dan Fogelberg and all that kind of stuff. Okay. Okay. Um, tell me about this song. Why in the world did you do this? Well, it's a, it's a conservative uh, protest song, uh, although I don't know that it's really limited to that worldview. Uh, it's a song that has two pieces to it. One is a challenge to the politicians who uh, sell us out and say one thing and do another. Um, the, the corruption of no fundamental beliefs. and But the other prong of it is, uh, where were you when all this was happening? Because we have self-governance in America, and uh, we have we have a corrupt, nasty government. Uh, ultimately, that's back on our decisions as we the people. So uh, it's both, a, both an indictment against uh, the corrupt folks in the political class and a challenge to the citizens. Uh, where are you going to be when all this stuff happens? Now, there are going to be some people who hear this and think it's an anti-Donald Trump song. I mean, can they read that into it? No, it was written a long, long time before that. Okay. Uh, I, I actually started working on the song in 2006 and finished it in 2010. Uh, so. Uh, it predates Donald Trump, but okay. uh, the controversies surrounding Donald Trump are not unique to him. Now, I mean, I'm going to press you on this again. You were not a Trump guy, not a Trump fan a few months ago. Right. Not supporting him. Are you supporting him now? And if so, what? What's changed? Yeah. Well, first of all, I've got, I, I, I'm going to vote for him. Uh, I, I'm going to go to the GOAT rodeo going to have to choose one of the goats. Um, but as, as I've spent time thinking about this, most decisions of government don't get made by the elected officer. Uh, the elected office, in my office, for example, not that big. Uh, we got about 800 people. Uh, and I can drive any decision. I can get involved in anything in my office that I want to, but I can't get involved in everything. Uh, and in fact, 
most of the things that get decided on a day-to-day -day basis, tens of thousands of decisions in the course of a year, are made by this team, this group of people that, whose judgment I trust. Well, I know what kind of a team Hillary Clinton is going to have around her, and they are people that disagree. I disagree with on everything. Mm -hmm. You know, what should what should tax policy look like? Um, how, what is the size of government? What are the proper missions of government? And you know, as uh, my misgivings about Mr. Trump as a candidate have not faded, uh, I, I hope he gives them, me reason for them to fade in our in the speech tonight. But you know, at the end of the day, to make no decision is to still make a decision. And I would rather have Donald Trump picking the tens of thousands of people over the course of a presidential term that will make the decisions that are more consistent with the way I view a free country. Okay. Honey stuff.